Okay. She's not in the yellow. She's not in the urban growth belt. No, she's not in the yellow. She's not in the city. Okay. If she's, in, if she's in gray, she's inside the urban growth boundary. Oh, I thought you said yellow. Okay, yellow is the city. city. On record. Of course, now I'm not ready. There we go. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the City of Lincoln City City Council meeting for Monday, February 26, 2018. It's now 6 p.m. If you wish to speak on an agenda or non-agenda item, please sign up at the sheet near the entrance door to the council chambers. You'll be called to speak during the public comment section. Comments or testimony on agenda items listed under public hearing. Public comment will be taken at that time. Roll call, please. Mayor Williams, Here. Dick Anderson, yes. Riley Hoagland, Diana Hinton. Here. Judy Casper is excused. Susan Walkie. Here. Thank you. Would you please all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get rolling, um, uh, I you might notice that we have a little display here at the end uh, of our dais. Uh, this is a small memorial uh, in remembrance of Councillor Kip Ward, who uh, succumbed to cancer last uh, Monday evening. He was a valued part of this council and the city, and he will be greatly missed. Um, would you please join me in a brief moment of silence to reflect on Kip, <coughs> excuse me, his legacy and his family? Thank you. And I do hate to uh, proceed, but proceed we must. Um, consent agenda. Uh, Your Honor, we have a uh, agenda change. Yeah. Are we talking about the, which one are we talking we about? We wanted to add a, a Smith, a Smith oh, thank settlement. You. Okay, I know it was um, in here somewhere. Under under city attorney, city manager, I make it, I think, an item number 11. 11. 11. Uh, okay. Right, okay, I'm sorry, that was in my email. And I did not put it in here. Somebody have that handy. I'm gonna have to pull my email. Yes, no, anyone got it? You're just gonna do it, or what are we? I, oh, no, I'm just asking now that you just, 
by oh, unanimous yes, yes, consent, yes. consent added to, to the agenda. Yep. Yes, thank you. The, the, I had received documentation on Friday, so it was after the agenda. Thank you. Added. All right. I'm trying to pull mine up here. Oh, Lord. Are you ready for consent agenda? Well, I'm a little, I'm sorry. I did not put this on mine. Um, so I need just a little guidance here as to. I think we just add the number 11 under L. Oh, okay. Right. litigation. Right, okay. So I'm not doing anything right now. That was my question. All right, so we're going to add that. So back to the consent agenda. Regular meeting, minutes of regular meeting, February 12th, 2018, 6 p.m. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. $5 in the jar. Could we either answer it or step outside? That would be great. Mm. Okay. Uh, comments from citizens present on agenda and non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to bring to the council's attention any item not listed on the agenda for public hearing or public comment. Comments are limited to five minutes per citizen and the city recorder will use the light system. Speakers may not yield their times to others. And as a general rule, this is not a time for exchange of questions. At the conclusion of this agenda item, a counselor may discuss or raise questions regarding an item presented by a citizen. The mayor has the authority to reduce the time allowed for comment in accordance with the number of persons present and signed up to speak. David Partridge. Oh, he's in the good paper tonight. Feel that. Anyone, it's fine. Just keep the microphone close to you and uh, okay. introduce you. yourself and have at it. Thank you, Your Honor and Council. Uh, my name is David Partridge. They do flex it, so feel free. My name is David Partridge, and I uh, am a developer, architect, builder of hotels. Um, we own hotels up and down the Oregon coast, and we own the hotel uh, Best Western right by Kylo's. Um, we redeveloped that a few years ago, and I think everyone would agree it's a nice property. Um, we're involved in purchasing the Cozy Cove um, Hotel property right now. It will be complete here any day. And we would like to redevelop that property into a new and improved hotel, kind of like the next life, the next uh, round for that property. Um, part of our work there is to um, demo the existing front older building, uh, if you're familiar with it. And I have a board here that I just show you. you got to stay close to the microphone. I have a board here I show you. Um, the existing Cozy Cove is these two properties. We would like to demo this property, uh, remodel this one completely. Um, demo this house and then this is the property like I said that we own already um, and it was our relationship through this that we became uh, had the opportunity to purchase this uh, Cozy Cove property um, in addition uh, in addition to the remodel here we would like to add a new lobby since that gets demoed with the demo I mentioned here and add 20 units here on this this property um, altogether we'll have less units than are there now even with the addition. Um, there's 67 units on the property now. When we're completed, we'll have 64 units. And uh, we were at a pre I had a pre-application meeting with the city on February 9th. Went really well. They suggested that I bring this as a consent item just to get it on your, on your radar. Um, we'll be submitting for a formal pre-application land use site review very, you know, as soon as we get it completed. We have professionals working on it right now. Um, I'd like to show you just a drawing of um, what it would look like here. Um, the existing building again there, uh, the new building and lobby here. Um, part of this would be vacating Northwest Fifth Court and rededicating uh, Northwest Fifth Court, basically just move it 90 feet to the north. And the, re the rededication would be to current code. Right now it's rather just kind of there. Um, we'd like to bring it to current code and 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 rededicate it there. Um, and then I have a uh, the parking would still be uh, at the same ratio it is now, and um, all oceanfront suites. None of the none of the suites would be facing the street. Uh, and then just this is a rendering that we have a current rendering of uh, what we're looking at. This is the existing building. We would like to add a fourth floor um, to the existing building. Um, 
there won't be a great height increase because there's already a full story um, attic on the existing building. Um, so we're working mostly within that space. And then the new, the new lobby and 20 new units would be here on this piece. So um, just wanted to get it on, the, on, the, uh, on your radar. Um, I'll leave a package of these drawings and a few additional drawings with the recorder. We are very um, concerned about disclosure at this point, so I respect that that's the package I leave isn't disclosed until the formal pre-application and that, that process has started. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing more. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you, David. Thank you. Uh, John Force. John? No? Okay. Anyone who did not sign up who wishes to speak, now's your time. Yes, no out there? Nope. Okay. We're moving on. Yeah? Please, come on. Do you want to talk about public hearings? Your Honor, you may want to clarify this isn't the public hearing. Yeah. Are, are you going to speak to the public hearing part about the public hearing we're going to talk about tonight? Uh, yes. Okay. That's a little, we'll get to you later then on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is the non-agenda stuff. <laughs> okay, we're moving on then. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Presentations? None? Your Honor, you have yeah. a script for the public hearing. Ah. Okay. Well, I'm getting to that. Public hearing ordinance, public hearing final assessment, yeah. Okay, it is now 6.10 p.m., the public hearing for the final assessment of Northeast 36 Drive Sanitary, Sanitary Sewer Local Improvement District. The public hearing concerns the final assessment for the previously formed Local Improvement District. The council must take a few moments to cover some preliminary matters and required statements. Does any member of the council wish to declare an ex parte conflict, conflict of interest, or bias in this matter? Hearing none, does any member of the audience wish to challenge the qualifications of a counselor to participate in this matter? Hearing none. Does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the council to consider this matter? Hearing none. Generally, the order of proceedings will be as follows. Preliminary matters, staff report, public comment in favor, public comment opposed, close of the hearing, close of the record, deliberations and decisions. If you wish to speak, please write your name and mailing address clearly on the sign-up list at the entrance. Please speak directly into the microphone and begin by stating your name. If you also have written testimony to submit into the record, please provide a copy to the recorder. Speaker may have up to three minutes. Please present staff report. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome back. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So um, this is a final assessment public hearing. Um, on August 14th, 2017, the Council approved a resolution to establish a local improvement district on Northeast 36th Drive. This was to provide sanitary sewer. Um, the estimated cost and the actual cost are compared in the table that I presented at the staff meeting, or the staff memo. Um, just to go over those, just to summarize those numbers, the actual cost is a little bit less than the estimated cost, okay? Um, what I did in the spreadsheet here, um, the table for council is showed the construction cost. So I wanted to compare an apples to apples. Um, so with the, um, with this resolution that is attached, the council accepts the engineering report. And the engineering report has the details of the final construction costs and the assessment per property. This is still based on the vacant lot um, being assessed at 22 potential units and one other vacant lot. Otherwise, all the other lots um, do have existing homes on them. So there's one mistake in the engineering report on page two um, under the method of assessment about mid mid-page, I said the cost per assessment unit is 7304. Um, recalculated that. I was based on something else, <laughs> a little bit different. And so the cost should actually be 728336 per property. That's just for the cost of the construction and formation and execution of the local improvement district. 
So what we showed in Exhibit 3 was, um, again, a complete calculation of all of the costs. Um, the difference in the estimated cost and the final cost, a couple things played out. Um, we ended up, if you recall, we had a contractor who bid um, and who couldn't perform and so he had to pay his bid bond of $24,000. That got credited back to the LID. And we also had a price of $10,000 per pump and that came down a little bit. So, um, I'm sorry, 6,000 per pump and that came, we, were by ten, we purchased 10 pumps. So that came down a little bit too. So on to the financing. People can finance the 7283-36 for tw up to 20, for 20 years. They can also finance the system development charges. Okay, so if you add the system development charges with the construction costs per connection, the total is, that's where I got the total, 11213 and 36. Um, at 20 years, we, uh, the monthly payment on that total would be 6707. The applicants will be able to choose if they want to finance their SDCs or not. So if they don't finance the SDCs, the amount is 4356 per month. The final, I want to explain this because there was a lot of confusion with the um, people I talked to um, about this. The estimated costs on this spreadsheet are only estimated. This is a cost that the, con that the property owners will pay the contractor to install and connect. It's very difficult to estimate these costs. So these are just rough numbers for people to understand. There's m something else they're going to owe when they come to connect. But as far as any payment to the city, it's all covered in the local improvement district if they finance their system development charges. So I think there's a lot of folks here who want to testify. Um, I got a lot of calls. Um, and so I've answered, fielded a lot of questions. I tried to anticipate um, what people's questions would be. But most of the complaint I got was this is too confusing. And there are a lot of numbers. There just are a lot of numbers. And I try my best to show them, you know, as clearly as I could. But um, so I'm um, definitely open to any questions um, now or after you hear testimony. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, how many people have hooked up at this point? Just one. Just one? The Rodriguez's. And then uh, looking at this first uh, item, um, had the, the costs of the whole project down and um, had art, half a percent for art, mm -hmm. built into the overall costs. Uh, estimate is one place, but over on the actual, I'm a little confused since this really isn't a public project. It's a public service, but the homeowners or owners are actually not only borrowing the money, they're paying interest, then it's all paid back. So shouldn't that be withdrawn from the actual costs? That is your discretion to withdraw that, yes. No, Council, I, think, I think the ordinance we, calls for public. It calls for public improvements. Improvements. We determined through conference with Ms. Rapicello that this was a public improvement, but it's still up to council of whether or not they want to assess this project with that amount. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Council Section 324050 waiver allows City Council in its, in its discretion to waive in whole or in part the percent for art requirement. I, I'm not arguing with that. I think I'm arguing with your definition of a public project. It's kind of hard for me to imagine this being a public project when I'm, you know, not only paying back principal but paying back interest versus this police building you know, the larger public is paying for the whole thing through its taxes or whatever, or, but this is a LID, and I, that's, that's all I'm questioning. Had, uh, but that, that's fine. It just takes a motion. I'd agree with you. 
Do you want to do it now or do you want to speak, Councilor Walker? I had another issue to bring up. Um, when is the SDC payable? When they put in the, when they hook up? Correct. If they don't finance, the SDC is payable when they connect, and then each year that SDC will go up. Right. And it, so the amount of the SDC would be determined by the year that they hook up. Correct. If they start financing it now, then they're guaranteed this amount. Correct. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, Your Honor, Counsel, there's one issue that um, I should probably address now. It's the potential unit method deferral. Um, when this project came in, there was one partial, uh, one parcel which was a commercial parcel which uh, staff testified could have 33 units using the potential unit method. It's one parcel now, it's not numerous parcels. Uh, it's not numerous lots, it's one lot. Um, using the potential unit method, which is staff uh, looking at the property and deciding how many units you could get on that, staff determined the number was 33. Um, the, the owner, uh, I think through a developer or consultant, um, was asking to fix the number at 22. Yes. And so the LID formation resolution said if the owner enters into a development agreement with the city uh, prior to one year from adoption of the formation resolution, that uh, they could have 22 as the, the assessment. Um, but if they didn't, it would go back to 33. So that resolution was passed on August 14th. Um, I did not address it in the ordinance, and so when we get to the ordinance, I'll have to read a sentence to add to the ordinance to address this. Um, but I just needed you to know that you must allow someone to defer payments um, if, uh, it, you have to put it in the ordinance is what I'm saying. Otherwise, they're not allowed to defer. So that's the first question. Are you going to allow this, this owner to defer payments un, until they actually get a development approval approved showing 22 units? Um, they would be allowed, if they had a development agreement, they would be allowed to defer 21 of, of the 22 units. If they do not have a development agreement, they would be allowed to defer 32 of the 33 units. So I just need to clarify that that's possible. Um, I did write some language to add to the ordinance. I'm actually gonna suggest when we get to the ordinance that we only do first reading uh, tonight because I think that owner particularly is gonna need to need some time to come in and, and uh, uh, get a development agreement moving. We're not doing the development agreement for them. They're gonna need to come in and it's just like city initiated vacation proceedings, uh, they have to do some of the work, so. Any other questions for Stephanie? Wait for Deanna to come back, but I, did you have any questions for Stephanie? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are now gonna take testimony in support. Anyone, I don't have anyone signed up, so now's your time. No, okay. Testimony in opposition. Sir, did you want to speak to this? Did you want to speak to this? Now's your time. Come on forward. So just have a seat. Hold the microphones kind of close. Give us your first and last name. That's all I need. And then let us have it. Hi, my name is Caprice Davis. My name is Ron Krieger. Welcome. We have some concerns regarding um, the issue that um, Richard was talking about. What if the property that is vacant isn't developed? What happens then? Um, because there seems to be so much left up in the air whether he's going to develop or not. And that is a large portion of this project funds. The next question that um, comes to mind is we 
my brother and I own two pieces of property, two parcels at 2845 uh, Northeast 36 Drive. We only have one connection, but we're being charged for two. So I'm wondering what, do we just connect into one connection there? Um, we're gonna get two residents to the one connection? If we decide to develop the second piece of property that we own that's behind the first piece, how do we connect that piece in? And what is the charge? And I mean, if we don't develop it, are we still going to be charged a connection fee? Uh, I think that's all I have. I had a, a question just um, when I worked up in uh, Washington State. We were always looking for state and federal grants. I, I don't know if there was any state and federal grant money that was available to help with a, uh, a sewer improvement district like this like with the DEQ Department of uh, or Water Quality people or anything? If that was ever pursued or if that was maybe a, a moot point, I'm not sure. Just a, I, I just throwing it out there. If, if anybody ever went down that path to see if there was any state or federal money out there that could help with this project. We're just being quiet for your questions. And stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> was that it? I think that's yeah. about it. Well, yeah. I think yeah. what I would direct you to is to Stephanie Reed briefly, uh, in, in particular your question about your lots and you know where does it go in that because she's the one who's going to be qualified to answer that question. And okay. then uh, where would we find the answer, Ron, about the grants and such? If, or, um, on all of these questions, I'm not sure we can answer these right at the moment, but uh, what we can do is to find the information and then if you guys, if you'll just give Stephanie a phone number. She may already have it. We can get this information back to the council and to you specifically. Okay. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Your Honor, you. uh, so council, I, I can answer at least part of this is that um, with regard to the concern for the commercial parcel that could have up to 33 units, um, 22 if they do a development agreement, um, if they properly defer, then um, the deferral is triggered when they sell. So let's say that the council goes ahead and adopts this ordinance imposing the final assessment and uh, says to these owners uh, of the commercial parcel, okay, you have 22 assessed. Uh, if you do a development agreement by August 14th, you have 33 assessed. If you uh, don't do a development agreement by August 14th, oh, and by the way, if you get 33 assessed, everybody else's assessment is gonna be reduced because they would have to recalculate. Um, so let's say they, um, they come in and they get a development agreement approved, reducing it to 22, they defer 21 units. Um, then the question is, when do they pay? Well, they pay when they sell the property. So if they get this and they get 21 units deferred and next year they sell, then all those 21 get paid. So that's, ensuring that it's not waiting for the actual development to occur, it's on sale. So if they sell to a developer who wants to do something with that property, that's when it gets paid. Also could, if they come in and they get a development approved in the planning department, it, that's triggers payment as well. So there's a couple triggers on, on that. Um, unlike, you know, everybody else, if they defer, they don't have to pay monthly, but those triggers are, are there. Um, on the question of I don't know if you have two lots, but if you have two lots, you have two assessments. If you have one lot that's capable of having two units, then you would have a potential unit and you could apply to defer one. But if you have two existing lots, even if you just don't wanna do anything with one of them now, you'll have two assessments. With only one connection? You'll we have only have one connection to the property. Now you only have you, you want to apply for one connection. If you have two lots, you're going to have two assessments. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what, about your connections, but. I was under the understanding that, um, or understood that the fees were per connection. The, the so if there's only one connection, why am I paying two fees? If, if you had a parcel, one lot, if you have one lot and you only want one connection, you would have one connection. If you have 
one lot but it's capable of 30 connections you could defer all but one we have two lots if you have two one lots connection. you're going to get two connections two assessments but they only put one stub in to our property Okay, I, I think this needs to be taken care of later if you're not going to be on the microphone. Would that be okay if you guys just get together? And we can. Yeah, okay. we'll, yes. we'll get with you and follow up Perfect. on this one. I think we'll need to check the plats and get with you in about how it's configured. I checked the city um, website and the map of the connections that are existing and that were put in. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. Anyone else speaking in opposition? Hearing none. Uh, others, including any testimony from representatives of public agencies, seeing none, continuance or leave record open. I guess uh, I would like to make the motion, um, and I, I don't know if we do that with the. We have an ordinance uh, on next the, to come. Yeah. Okay, so we can change some of the figures. Uh, I have only one correction to the ordinance and the addition of some language regarding the deferred units or well the math will change depending on this motion okay so I don't know if I need to do it in the public hearing before it closes so we can change new information I think if if you're going to say take out the percent for art right. say I would I'll go ahead and make that motion now and then um, Again, I recommend that we not do second reading at this meeting, and so when we have new numbers, I'll be able to read them at second reading. Okay. I, the question is, on the we haven't closed the public hearing. To keep the public hearing open and do this motion, that, that's the, the only okay. question on the table at this point. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know that you need to keep the public hearing that's open to do the math to correct it. Okay, that's, so. that was it. So I'd make the motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Are aye. We, is this an ordinance? Do we need a roll call on that? Uh, this is just the no, public, okay. hearing. public hearing. Uh, opposed. Hearing none. Motion carries. And then the uh, the record. Oh. Is it separate from the public hearing? And right? yeah. and motion to close the public record. Should we make the motion before we close the record? All to remove the arts. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I can't yeah. hurt nothing. But I think under deliberations, you can certainly direct staff to recalculate. Uh, but if you want to do it before the records close, that's fine. Okay. I have no problem. I, with that. Make the motion to close the record. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, do I have to read the rest of this? No, that's done. Okay, that's it. Deliberations during you got, the Does the city staff yeah, attorney, your staff have comments concerning legal issues raised? And at this proceed? point, you can deliberate and because you have to do an ordinance. Oh, I'm order sorry, yes. It's a matter to return to the table for deliberation and recommendation. Thank you. Sorry. Now's the time. So I'd, I'd make the motion to remove the half percent for art out of the um, LID ordinance second motion a second discussion um, I'm just gonna pipe in I I like the addition um, for public art but I do agree with Councilor Anderson I don't think it's appropriate for this project yeah any other discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed hearing none motion carries thank you for catching that Councilor Anderson appreciate that all right. Is uh, any other deliberations, recommendations? Okay. So, Separate resolutions prepared for council I, action. I think you could make a motion to, you know, proceed with the ordinance uh, when we get to it, which is like okay. ten minutes away. Anyone want to make that motion to proceed with the uh, ordinance? I move to proceed with ordinance twenty eighteen oh five when. We reach that point in the agenda. With the modification as directed by the prior motion. With the modification um, pursuant to the motion that just passed. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so we're looking for a second. Got it. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. All right, that was clear as mud. All right. Uh, did we get to 1801 yet? Okay. Ordinance 2018-01. Thank you again to those who uh, came forward, and I hope we can get that cleared up for you. This is a complicated matter, but it's definitely excellent as usual. Thank you. I will clear that up for those folks. I'll look into that. There's Thank you. Something's not right. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, you want to just go ahead? Yeah. Um, Council, this is first reading of Ordinance 2018-01, uh, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title II, Administration and Personnel, adding a new Chapter 207, Public Records Policy, adding to the code and updating the existing City of Lincoln City Public Records Policy adopted in Resolution 2008-22. Uh, I'm going to ask for approval of first reading. Um, I, before I do that, I'd like to read a change. Uh, on the in packet page 31, there is a table, and that table lists a bunch of email addresses. And after talking to uh, IT staff about this, we uh, since the ordinance already says um, the websites of the records coordinators or the email addresses of the record coordinators will be uh, on the website. Uh, we don't see the need to put in the ordinance the email addresses. And so um, I'd like to ask to delete um, starting on, let's see, starting on page 30 of the packet, page 7 of the ordinance, delete the words records coordinator contact information is as follows and then deleting the entire table which lists department records coordinator for city attorney city manager city recorder emergency preparedness finance hr it library parks and recreation parks and or planning and community development police public works urban renewal vcb you see they're listed vicky lawrence courtney liberato Kathy Steer, Mark Nicholson, Jamie Young, Colleen Scanlon, Tony Lasoya, Debbie Christian, Gail Kimberling, Kate Daschle, Tammy Williams, Kevin Mateus, Pam Weirin, and Liz Francis, and the associated email addresses, all those are deleted. Uh, and again, those will be on the city website. They just don't need to be in the ordinance. Uh, I think that's the only change that, that we're asking for at this time. Um, there is another section in the code that I did not ask to amend. It has to do with destruction of public records and, and our procedure. And I will come back with uh, a city public records maintenance and retention amendment and incorporate that. But if, in case you were looking at the code, there is, yes, there is still this section that we have not yet addressed. So I'll ask for approval of first reading of Ordinance 2018-01. So moot? With that. With the, with the, the changes as read. With changes as read. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Yeah, I had a, a question. Um, in the city recorder's absence, it says the deputy city recorder, if any, shall serve as the custodian and records officer. Do we have a deputy city recorder? We don't. So who would serve in the city recorder's absence? In a practical sense, that has been an uh, assignment that I have made, and uh, when Kathy has not been available, we have been using um, Kate Daschle from the planning department. But she's not officially the... She's not officially a deputy city recorder. Okay. How do we rectify that? I don't know that you need to unless you want to create that position, but uh, at this point, I don't know that we need to create that position. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, my concern in this... Um, where we get to level two request uh, must be submitted to records officer referred to co records coordinator may be signed with blah 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 um, requests must be clearly and correctly identify must clearly and correctly identify the document may not require extensive staff research to locate the document how does someone applying for this know that and if they ask for too much will they get a chance to be told hey this isn't right we're not going to charge you again take it back and fix it the, I don't want to drag it out and keep charging people. Yeah, the intention is to try to make this a little more user-friendly, and part one of that was to take the resolution 2008-22, uh, which nobody in the public reads, and fold it into our code, and, that's, and so they can look at it on the website. 
The second part was to take the changes that were made in the 2017 legislature, which imposed time frames on staff to respond to public records requests and get those into that existing resolution. So the language you read is from the existing resolution 2008-22. It's what we do now. And the process is very interactive in the sense that people typically contact the city recorder and they say, hey, here's my public records request. And then the city recorder says, well, would you like to clarify or narrow your request? Um, and because the, the clearer you can be in your request, yeah. the more efficiently we can provide the records. And, and what I mentioned earlier is that we're going to talk about maintenance of public records and destruction of public records. And our maintenance means maintenance and use. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of public records that we really shouldn't have to go look for for people because we should put, make them available on our website. Um, so we're going to be moving toward that as the more to make things more accessible and user friendly, keeping in mind that there are records that are confidential we need to redact. Um, so we're very mindful of that. There is an interactive process to to make sure that we, uh, you know, keep these things moving along. And we have time frames now that push us to to keep them moving along. Um, and what you don't see here is we're going to try to beef up our website and kind of put in a little bit more instructions uh, for how to make it a little more user friendly. We looked at a couple examples from other cities and so we're, we want to move toward that um, and hopefully if this is if this goes forward tonight then we can work on that for 30 day it'll be effective in 30 days and we should be set up by then. Okay so I'll try to clarify my question. Uh, I'm just going to give an example. Someone comes in doesn't have a clear idea what they're asking for they have a general idea. They fill out a piece of paper and submit it to the city recorder. City recorder can't get to it the day you're busy, you're on vacation, whatever. Uh, have we triggered the starting time? Yes. When a complete request is submitted to the city recorder, it and, triggers and the, the fees have to be accompanied. No, the first for the first deadline is a five-day deadline. The, the request comes in, it's submitted to the city recorder. We have five days to acknowledge the request, and that first trigger is uh, we are the the entity that has these records or uh, we are not the entity that has these records or we're not sure if we have these records we have some maybe not others and we just had a request like that last week where someone asked for something and some of the records they requested we don't have we don't keep those records okay. and that that's response that's five business days we have to give that initial response okay. so and I'm just concerned about the fee part at some point af after that um, and we, we, we endeavor to give them uh, in a, in a timely fashion and estimate. So if we say we do have those records and it will take us approximately two and a half hours to assemble them and that's at the rate of X, uh, this is, and it, if it's over $25, we have to give them the estimate and say, okay, it'll be $35 to get those so records. It'll be clarified for them what they, we do and don't have, what, and perhaps maybe they want to narrow their definitions and then once that's agreed to between the parties, then they pay. Yes, yes. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Clear as mud. <laughs> Thank you. No, it was good. I appreciate it. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Hinton? Yes. And Walkie? Yes. Motion carries. Did you pick up? I could barely hear Riley's. Did you pick that up? On there? Okay. I barely heard the Your Honor Counsel, this is second reading of ordinance number 2018-01, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title II, Administration and Personnel, adding a new Chapter 207 public records policy, adding to the code and updating the existing City of Lincoln City public records policy adopted in Resolution 2008-22. Ask for approval of second reading and adoption of the ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Walkie? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Resolution 2018-01, extending Lincoln City workers' compensation to volunteers. Your Honor, yeah. no, we no. have an ordinance before that. What, what did I miss? Item I-4. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was the... Okay. I got mine mixed up here. Thank you. All right. right. Ordinance 2018-05. Your Honor, this is first reading of Ordinance 2018-05, an ordinance of the City of Lincoln City providing for the levy of final assessments for the construction of a sewer improvement known as the Northeast 36th Drive Sanitary Sewer Local Improvement District 
formed by resolution 2017-16 fixing and spreading said final assessment amounts against properties within the district. I have a few changes. Uh, uh, first change on the engineering report is under method of assessments. Uh, the number 7,304.67 cents needs to be changed to $7,283.36. Um, also in the ordinance, um, I would add a new section seven and renumber uh, the sections beginning with the existing section seven to be sections uh, eight, nine, 10, uh, instead of seven, eight, and nine. And uh, so the new section seven would read, deferral for potential units is authorized for 071102CA00103 as set forth in LCMC 1304155, provided the assessment shall be for 22 units with 21 deferred if the owner enters into a development agreement with the city prior to August 14th, 2018. If the owner does not enter into a development agreement, the assessment for 01, I'm sorry, 071102CA00103 shall be 33 units with 32 deferred, and the city shall modify assessments by ordinance to reduce the assessments against all properties to reflect the reallocation. Um, so with the understanding that council has made a motion to take out the percent for art and it will require uh, changes which I'll read at the next meeting ask for approval of first reading and set second reading for um, I'm gonna say March 12th but maybe you want to go to March 26th just to give us enough time move to approve uh, ordinance 2018-05 um, first, read. first reading with uh, the Changes, as, Changes well. as so indicated and uh, come back with second reading on March, second meeting of March. March 26. March 26. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Um, I just noticed that in, well, in the past and adopted, you've got the 26th in there, the 26th day of February 26, 2018. Second 26 should be out. Um, in the paragraph right before that, it says the second reading shall be February 26, 2018. So that date will need to be changed also. Okay. Um, further discussion? I'll read those changes at the next reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Walkie? Yes. Williams? Yes. And Anderson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. All right, now. Resolution 2018-01, extending Lincoln City workers' compensation to volunteers at the City of Lincoln City. Good evening. Um, you have before you a resolution. Um, this is a resolution that we pass every year, um, just updating our volunteer information for CIS, who is our workers' compensation um, cover, who covers our workers' compensation. So this is basically uh, housekeeping, just updating it for the year resolution and the only thing that's changed in the resolution from this year from last year is we included the words all volunteers of the VCB Inc so that it's understood that includes the float ferries culinary center any volunteers that work in the VCB yes please no questions <clears throat> This says that all non-public safety volunteers will track their hours? We, d we do, we actually track hours. The, um, for the different departments, track the volunteer hours and then they turn them into me and then I in turn turn them into CIS and that's how they assess um, how much we'll pay for those. Well, one of the covered bodies is the city council. Correct, and we, we have a formula that we okay. use for covering you guys mm -hmm. while you're here. For, okay. for on city business. Um, my other question is what about um, the Library Foundation? Do they have their own coverage? They do have their own coverage. They are not covered under ours. Oh, Mr. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. Now, for clarification, this is not a benefit package for no. volunteers. This is 
workman comp in case they get injured, injured in the being a volunteer correct. for the city. Absolutely. Work. And just during Yep, this, that is that exactly what it is. And for a real good for instance is this last summer during Kite Fest there was a volunteer who twisted their ankle and they were covered under our workman's comp for that injury they sustained. And that's the purpose for it. Thank you. Well, I have a question, and I don't want it to be larger than it might sound, but is there any training going along with any of these positions if we're, that they could help? So that's the first volunteer accident that I am aware of since I've been here, and I don't know that there's been any prior to that. Um, that particular accident was a fault with um, equipment. Um, it was a trip over cords that weren't properly covered. Yes, um, we do make sure that our volunteers, when they're out, are, you know, they are trained to do their job safely and to watch for precautions. And Mr. Mayor. Lift, lifting procedures and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, th and they would be trained either through uh, the human resources or through the individual departments through which they are volunteering. So in other words, there will, be different, there will be different levels of training based upon what the types of duties there are. I just want to make sure that there's somebody saying, hang on, before you jump into this, and you're all good-willed people, but let's talk about Pretty safety. Every department has their own little orientation package for their volunteers, and they go through all of those things in, as it pertains to that particular volunteer job that okay. they're doing at that time. All right, great. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, in motion. Move to approve resolution 2018-01. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Hearing none, need a roll call on this one? No, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Colleen, appreciate it. All right. Um, okay, so we're into K now, the special order business. And I'm gonna need someone to walk me through. <laughs> I got the, the budget committee one, but the, the other two, where we landed on that. Let's start with budget committee. Let's do. Who's got it? Mayor, I, if, if you're doing um, the parks board, is, are you doing budget the budget committee? committee? Budget committee, okay. Um, who, who interviewed? Don't we interview? This, we this is the budget public. committee is one in which you interview right. in public now. Oh. So you have on your um, your desk uh, some questions that we prepared in case you uh, wanted those, but uh, you need to conduct the interview during this meeting. Okay. So Deborah, so question, if I could, before yeah. we bring up, I, um, I'm, I'm just recalling when we had we. There's a date certain. I assume we need to have applicants in order to get to the budget committee before it starts? The first uh, training session will be on March 20th. March March 20th. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping there's more applicants since we have more vacancies. I hope so. We still have uh, two vacancies. Right. Okay, that's what I... Should. So I, I was just wondering, I, in the planning commission role, we had all the applicants out at, at one time. I'm just wondering if we wouldn't, and I, I apologize since we have one applicant tonight, um, but to have all applicants on a, a specific night to, to ask. Uh, Mrs. Steer, do we have any applicants that are pending? I believe I have one applicant. I think I have like five applications, that, but I think one of them is for the budget committee, but, I, but there's an ad that's going into the paper um, there was one last week, and there's one today, a colored ad for the Budget Committee Planning Commission to try to get uh, more applicants. I think we have three vacancies. So I, my only request, rather than doing three times, you know, would it, would it, the question really is, would it be better to have all the applicants at one time to do an interview rather than I every would agree meeting? with that, and, and absolutely no offense to you, Deborah. Right. But we don't know who's going to come up. And if we have five or six and we've already said yes, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So, but thoughts on council? Mm, I agree with that. But um, Deborah's made the effort to be here, and she is the only one applicant that we have now that's gone through 
the process and is available and is here. No, I understand all that. My point being, and I, we can certainly do that, and then we can deal with one next time and as it comes, or we move everybody to the last date, the last council meeting before we need them and line them up and kind of go through. One, certainly this is a very public meeting and you're asking the same questions to everybody and you're right. giving oh, other, I, yeah, I other get people it, right. you know, three <laughs> weeks, five weeks to think of a good answer. And poor, you know, poor Deborah's gonna be jammed with a question surprise. Um, it just seems a little awkward. It would have to be next meeting if it's prior to the 20th. Mr. Mayor, the meeting on the 20th is the training session. It's not the presentation of the budget, but it is the training session. So our first actual budget meeting is in April, second meeting of April, or, for, or I guess it wouldn't be a council meeting. Uh, I, be uh, I believe it's mid-April uh, when we'll have our first meeting. So in theory, our first April meeting, we could have on the agenda all applicants for a budget committee meeting and do this interview process. Then we'd have to have the training after the 20th of March. I don't want the mm -hmm. training before we pick our... Mm -mm. I don't either. That's really We important. would either do that or we would have to hold the training separately for those individuals. That's fair. Can I ask a question? Um, uh, the city recorder, what, what's the time frame if you get an application after the newspaper ad and and you how long does it take from the time that you get it to when it is available to us? It depends on where they lived in the, you know, I mean the background check if they have to go to other states to check. Um, but generally it's three days, maybe four days at the most. Oh. It's pretty. It's been pretty quick. And I have a question. Um, I'm not a big cable watcher, so is this something that's advertised on our on Channel Four? That people who might be you know, maybe proceeding or following a, a council meeting could be directed to do this, or are we just doing newspaper? Right now, the only thing we're putting on Channel Four is just the repeat of these meetings. We're not uh, putting it out as an advertisement. Uh, we're not putting general information for advertising on Channel Four yet. Is it possible to do that? It is something we're working toward as we're finishing up the uh, contract negotiations with uh, Charter. I don't know if I just hold a sign. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, it doesn't seem that difficult to me. Um, is the newspaper the only avenue, we're at, or is this on the website too? On the website. Okay. It may not be on the website yet, but it will be <laughs> on the website. That's my point. And I, I go on it's been on, it's sent out to the news media group. Uh -huh. So it's radio um, and the two newspapers. Um, posted on bulletin boards. Yeah, it should be posted on the bulletin board. Anyone scheduled for the radio up. coming up here soon? Wednesday. Well, maybe a good mention there. I will. Okay. So could I suggest we hold off on budget committee applicants until April 9th and deal with all applicants at that point? I would agree with that. Deborah, I'm so sorry. Is that okay with you? I I would like to see us consider applicants um, at the second meeting in March instead of the first in April. So do we make a motion on it or vote? So or? In order, if I could, Susan, it, it, are you trying to incorporate training? Is that the... Yeah, more time for the training. Our our first budget meeting, though, isn't until fifteenth. That's a Sunday. I'll have to I'll, I'll have to check on the date. I don't have the well. Give me a minute. Let's see if I can find it. You're right. I show it as the sixteenth. So in in theory, you could. I mean, we're talking about three new members. Versus fourteen. I'm just trying to give as much time for an ad to run and get, you know, any applicants, if there are any out there, to get in. Um, My concern is training prior to the first meeting. Yeah, and we'd still have a week. When's the first meeting? 
the 16th? 16th. So you'd have so the okay. There will be a week for people to clear their schedules. I'm in favor of it. May I ask a question? Please. So when, um, when the applicants are contacted, um, do they, are they provided with a list of when the meetings are scheduled? Yes. Time, so it's not a surprise. No, it's really not that involved. It's, just it's not that involved, but people do have to be available. Months, three months. There's a lot of material to read. There's a lot to go through. So it's pretty intense for about a three-month period. Oh, I know. I just, the specific dates of the meeting, if they're told earlier, then... And I didn't mean to say that the budget process is not involved, but getting there and getting the training and all that is not that intense. So, is, is there time on the city's calendar for a training that week? Uh, whenever you schedule this, uh, we will make time. And uh, whether we do that for the three positions together or do it individually, we'll we'll make time to accommodate their schedules, just as long as they're ready to go for that first uh, budget meeting. Uh, one in, uh, no, never mind, never mind. Well then I guess, do we need a motion? Do we or, just need a nod consensus. ahead? Or, uh, okay, I'm good with your recommendation, that's good. two. Anyone else, Deanna? No. That's three. That's, nine. that's four. Susan, are you all right? Okay. All right, good, thank you, hey, thank you. Deb, I appreciate your patience with us. All right. All right. Just a moment. Let me center everything here. All right. Uh, the Applicant Parks and Recreation Board. Somebody please explain to me what we resolved. Okay. Um, Councillor Hinton and I. Um, interviewed um, parks and board parks and recreation board applicants um, separately <laughs> um, I think we did I did too oh I'm sorry yeah, I no think. excuse me <laughs> mayor Williams and I interviewed correct um, we have some special language about membership in the park and Recreation Board. Currently, we have three openings. No, two openings because we have we had appointed and we've appointed two. We appointed three last time, correct? Yes, and one of those resigned. Because he was fired. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, you know, on the Parks Board, we have one, two, three, four, five positions where the person needs to be a city resident, and two positions that can be either urban growth boundary residents or if no urban growth boundary residents are applicants, then we can go into the um, Taft High District. One of those outside city residents is filled. Her term doesn't expire until the end of this year. And we have one applicant who lives in the urban growth boundary? Correct, that's been confirmed right. just in the last And few one months. applicant who lives outside of the urban growth boundary? Taft, yes, school district. Our conundrum is that they are both excellent candidates. Um, I would love to be able to put them both on um, we currently have a vacancy, but I think that, but that is for a city resident. Um, 
we only have the two positions that can be non-city residents. So I'm a, <laughs> the, the applicant who lives outside of the urban growth boundary has been on the parks board. She has history on the parks board and I would love to reappoint her. Um, but I think from the way the code reads, um, we are confined to the person who lives in the urban growth boundary, who is also an excellent candidate. She has um, experience in, in Clackamas County and um, I think she will also be a, a great asset to this board. So, any f other discussion? <laughs> well, we're discussing uh, Joyce and Feather, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I concur with you about uh, Feather. Um, I, I, it, we'd win either way. Um, yeah. I, I lean more towards Joyce just because I like new blood and people get involved in the city. Um, so that would be my choice and absolutely no offense to Feather. And, and Feather has, has been on the board longer than anyone else has been through the parks master plan um, so she's got the history that I, I'm sorry we're going to lose but um, there may be an opening oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's never forever so uh, I move to a point um, Sir, no discussion yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going <laughs> to say that I, <coughs> excuse me, um, that I've um, talked with both of these people. One is in my ward and the other one I spoke with because I uh, monitor the, the parks board. Um, Heather, I mean Feather, I always do that. Um, <coughs> and, um, Joyce is already um, the person, the other, the new person, is um, connected with parks in another way. She's going to be assisting and working with Jeannie on a couple of other projects. So she told me she feels fine about that type of involvement and that um, it would be okay if she isn't appointed, that she'd still continue helping with parks. So. I just wanted to offer that up because she mentioned that to me. But well, it really doesn't because she's applied, oh, that's right. and if she's applied and she's in the <coughs> urban growth boundary, which has now been confirmed that she is, then we are. Um, Unless she wants to withdraw her application. Yeah, that would be the only thing. Folks, problem is until we hear from her. Well. I mean, she doesn't I want don't to. Understand. I don't understand that discussion. You've got two applicants. But only. And one position? No, you've got we have one eligible position. We have one position. That you and that do. has to be given to a person in the urban growth boundary if there's an applicant from the urban growth boundary and Feather is not, does not live in the urban growth boundary. That, that, so that's she's the She's like issue. two miles from it. Okay, so <laughs> she's outside the urban growth zone. Right. Even though, so she must have filled that seat or, or we didn't have, have applicants before and right. fell under this, yeah. Right, but gotcha. if Joyce were to withdraw her application, Feather would be qualified for that. That's true. Right? As long as we had no other application. Right, so that's my point is if Joyce is fine and it's stated to you that she's fine withdrawing, like I, I don't know if we need some kind of formal thing from her to withdraw, then at our next meeting, we could appoint Heather, and we have the best or Feather. We have the best of both worlds on this. If someone is happy filling one role, and then we appoint to a very qualified member. Obviously, if you had something in writing withdrawing the application, then you could go on and follow the the priority in the ordinance, um, and and go with uh, someone in the Lincoln County School District North. But without that, you are pretty much your hands are tied. Though you must right. appoint the UGB person. You have a quizzical look there, Kathy. No, okay. So, 
we have an indication through Councilor Hinton that the individual may have wanted to withdraw to clear the way she says so based on what you've heard from her are you're comfortable with maybe delaying this until next I think week? we should delay it and give her an opportunity to decide because she will be she said and that she will be involved with parks one way or another so we'll find out I can ask her what sure make the suggestion we delay this until next meeting and everyone go with that okay mr. mayor just a quick question so uh, somebody should contact her do you is that the staff that you want to contact or should uh, one of you follow up with that okay that's fine I mean I'm I'm willing to do it but if you and if yes, it's yes, yes, uh, just if you something in writing just to yeah. say I withdraw my application for the parks and work parks and rec department right. email satisfactory yes okay. Okay. I'll just ask her. I, I, yes. I just want to explain that this was um, more confusing because we just found out tonight that they that Joyce does live in the urban growth boundary and that yeah those are those made it a little different than what my little had hairs we have before. to split from time right. to time and we weren't that's why I just these folks have been discussing it and I, I couldn't follow what you were talking about <laughs> two I was seeing four applications two positions all right so that's done then all right real Thank good you. uh huh uh, now that is where we're going to plug in. So, city manager, city attorney reports, correct? Okay. Okay. So, city council vacancy. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. So, unfortunately, we do have a vacancy in the city council. Under the charter, um, that vacancy uh, is filled by appointment, or if the council uh, prefers, they can do that by an election. Um, if you uh, would desire to um, uh, fill that position by appointment uh, the staff will begin that process if you wish to fill it through an election uh, our recommendation is to wait until the November election and then the seat would remain unfilled until January of 2019 and not hold a special election we've kind of missed the time frames to get into on a May election we kind of did or did well, technically, no, we haven't missed it, but the difficulty is giving the people the time that they'll need in order to get their uh, the proper signatures that will be needed. It's um, only about, uh, Kathy, about three weeks before they have to have all of that information in. We would have to advertise in the newspaper and the news media, and uh, I have to have the, the signed applications, the signature sheets, into the county clerk by March 12th. So that doesn't really give enough time to. Okay. So okay. kind of, yeah. Technically, no, we haven't right, missed it, but, but it's out. the timing that w is difficult. Yes. Question: If if this is waits until November election, can that person be appointed? The person who wins the election, can they be appointed before? before they take office in January? It seemed we had the discussion I'm sure I know the point, answer so. to that question. Um, I think, Richard, do you know the answer to that question? Well, of course the charter allows you to appoint someone right. to this position. So um, are you saying just use the election as the process to, to choose? And then that's, of course, they're only gonna give you somebody for Two, two months. months right yeah. right but it, it would be two months it was suggested to me uh, you have the, the power to appoint uh, the position and then of course that person is free to put in their hat in the ring for the election or not so um, we can wait till the election God yeah, I'd be <laughs> looking to the November election um, and then do the, with all the seats, you know, as we induct in January. Right, yeah. So you're looking at two, two meetings, maybe yes. maybe three. Maybe yeah, three. In, yeah. From the November election. So you prefer not to appoint. Uh, yes, I'm not interested in appointing now or even after a November election to to fill the short gap. 
I'd just let the process run, apply for the November election um, would be the process. Keep keep it vacant and let any, uh, hopefully candidates will come forth for the November election. I'm in favor of that. That's I am okay. too. Okay, so we're gonna defer to that, I guess. Anything, Councillor Hoagland? It, it, from, from my standpoint, it would be really great if you made that official through, an emo through a motion. All right. I'd make the motion to fill the uh, Ward 3 vacancy by um, uh, waiting or allowing the 2018 election to November. be the process. November election. So, uh, excuse me, November. Um, election to be the process for filling that seat. I second it. Motion second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor, the second item that we have under the Thank manager you. and attorney section is the uh, outside agency request. Uh, this is a continuation from our previous meeting. Uh, we have added all of the um, items that you had discussed, with the exception of the items that were in red because uh, they either came up after the fact or we didn't have a clear direction that that is uh, what you wanted. So the first item, so the first thing that's changed on this is that we did add a cover letter that we would send out. We hadn't included that before, but this time we did. And then the second, as this is on packet page uh, 69, um, one of the questions that uh, an applicant would have to address is question number four. How many Lincoln City residents do you expect will be served? The discussion was, do you want to put residents of the local city school area or the Taft High School District, something to that effect? So that uh, is something that we need to have um, uh, your guidance on. We also, there was a, after the meeting, there was a request that came in for some, for a language that dealt with discrimination. So that is on packet page 70, and you'll see that in red. And then there was discussion on whether or not we needed the signatures of the contact persons. So we showed what it would be like if you crossed those out. So uh, those were the three items that we felt were remaining. All of the other items that you discussed, we've incorporated into, the, into this uh, check application. Thank you. Your Honor, the next item would be the, uh, do you need a motion on that or? That's what, yeah, I'm still waiting for Well, some. we have the three items that we need. To, you either need to say yay or nay. Right. Um, and then um, let us know if you're, so I guess the first question is, do you want to include residents of the Lincoln City School area or do you want to leave it as Lincoln City residents on question number four? That's my first question of you. School area would be my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, but not worded this way. Um, residents of TAF. I'm sorry. It's the question is how many non-Lincoln City residents do you expect will be served? <laughs> question three is how many Lincoln City residents? <coughs> how many? So would you put how many non-Lincoln City residents? Uh, do you expect to be served, and how many within the within the Taft High School District? I would say North Lincoln County is. North Lincoln County. How many non-Lincoln City North Lincoln County residents do you expect to be served? How many non-Lincoln City comma <laughs> North Lincoln residents? Okay. There is no Lincoln City School area. Okay. So how many non-Lincoln City, comma, North Lincoln residents do you expect will be non-Lincoln City, non-North Lincoln County. County residents do you expect will be served? Uh, Mr. Hogan? I'm not for that. I mean, it's just it's pretty clear how many non-Lincoln City residents will be served. I don't need, to, I don't understand what the point of saying non-school district people are, and it's an anticipation anyway. The outside agency requests are for many, many organizations. I mean, the, you know, 
the Humane Society gets the Humane Society gets money. You know, um, a lot of different organizations that don't specifically deal with children do get money. So I'm just why the specific of North Lincoln County School District specifically? Well, if I could just so I get clarification, I don't think it's 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 to exclude people. It's just more information for the committee. I understand. Correct? Is that right? Yeah. I understand that. But I'm asking why specifically North Lincoln County School District needs to be worded against non-Lincoln City residents. It was brought up by the City Council at the last meeting. That's and, why it's there. And I would argue, what? I, I would go with the answer is you can, you, one question is defining Lincoln City. You're asking the question about Lincoln City residents. Sure because that's where the money is coming from. Then further clarification, you know, for an organization that serves the North End, or emphasis is on the North End, I would be interested as a grantor that they're North End oriented. They may be countywide organization as your animal, but if all our dollars are going to, you know, animals owned by Waldport, you know, I, I'd be a little concerned. Um, and that, that's all I'm trying to you know, take a look at, or when I read these questions, I like to know who their emphasis is. Sure, and, but you have the organization that deals with children without representation. You have children who are victims of, you know, um, uh, you know, sexual acts that are based in Newport. Those organizations are based in Newport, but if you see, if you go to four and they go, well, they hope mostly kids, and, in Newport, then I think that it will push it away versus saying, well, yeah, that organization does need that money. And I just see as it it's, would divide it versus more supporting. I, think so. I mean, I don't, I, I, yeah. I can disagree. Just, right. You know what I mean? It's just but, information. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it's voting, I'm saying that. Yes. I don't think it should refer to students. I think it should say how many non Lincoln City. North Lincoln County residents do you expect to serve? Because I want to know if they are serving our city and the surrounding area. Agreed. Do you have that, Ron, then? No. Yes, I have. How many non-Lincoln City, comma, North Lincoln County residents do you expect will be served? Can we approve it with that change? Well, I've got two more that I oh, need said, to ask. Okay, you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the second item is uh, on packet page 70. There is a discrimination clause. The organization requesting this funding shall not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, creed, gender, age, national origin, ancestry, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, or marital, marital, military status in any of its activities or operation. Would you like to include that in this? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and then the last uh, one that uh, we needed clarification on is do you want to uh, take out the signature of the contact person? Yes, I'd like to. I'm not sure if I do because if, you know, if this is signed by the um, official person, let's call it the president of an organization, but if a coordinator person is actually going to be the person <coughs> that's the contact person for the for receiving grants, I think we ought to know who we're dealing with. But we and you do. On the first page it says primary contact. We're just asking oh, okay. to sign it. Oh, I see. But I, I think we should have the board an authorized official accept. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. I mean, could it be primary contact slash, you know, representative? I mean, are we just, is that understood that all, all communication will be through primary contact? So I can tell you that when we normally apply for the grant, it is whoever is authorized to sign that, not necessarily the contact person. So for example, I will assign for a grant, but I'm not the contact person. It will be somebody else in one of the departments. So it's fairly common not to have the contact person sign. But it could be. But, it, but you could do that, yes, ma'am. I have one other question, if I might. Under, um, on, um, 
Under that first box of the organizational information, um, there's the funding history. See that? That's on page 69. In the second line, it says yes or no and circle, and then you're supposed to circle. Again, were we going to make this available we online? Then we have to fix that. Yeah. Change that. Okay. And it will, does, it, does the language need to change from submission deadline is April 3rd, 2018, or a budget year to be considered? No, th this isn't like an ordinance yeah. where I won't be able to change it. This will change oh, next okay. year to another well, date. Well, I was, you know, yeah. we're here, we're here. Yeah, but for this year, it is uh, April 2003rd is when it's due, and next year we'll put a different date on it. It doesn't need to. No. Okay. All the changes, Ron? I think so. Okay, motion? The changes. Good job. Yeah, well, thank you. We don't need to give you a motion on that? No, you're good just with a head nod? If you would like to, I uh, but I don't know that you need to. Very good. Just question, question, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's nice to have the press here, but uh, April 3rd is coming up. So is there a way that this is going to be advertised? Uh, um, uh, in the past, uh, we have sent it out to previous recipients. Right. We will do that, but we will also advertise it through the media, so that would be the paper, the radio, um, and uh, and our web page and so forth. So we'll try to get the word out uh, more broadly. Okay, uh, and this is where we insert. Oh, no, Mr. Mayor, no. I'm sorry. I have two more items that I just. These are really cool items. I was just very. I've been waiting all week to tell you about these items. <laughs> So the first one is we have uh, community days and Arbor Day that are coming up and they're being combined together. And I was really excited, especially for Councilor Hoagland on this because several months ago, he brought up to our attention in one of these meetings of a Sitka spruce tree that's about 400 years old uh, that's in the Regatta, uh, Regatta Park. Um, it's two minutes off the, off the park down a small trail. We even have a bench in front of it. Um, we are going to be celebrating with ribbon cutting of, for that tree, not a tree cutting, a ribbon cutting, as part of that Arbor Day celebration. And so we are just, uh, we are really excited about that. That was uh, our staff that has suggested that uh, to really celebrate Arbor Day. And in addition to planting trees, we celebrate what we have, and that is a very unique tree. The other one that we're very excited about is that I put a map on your uh, table uh, off of Northwest Ore Place. We own some property which is almost entirely a ravine, except a small piece that's right up at the top which is very flat and mostly it's unused. We just mow the grass right now. It's completely unused. We just mow it. So uh, uh, in our budget this year, we had budgeted $80,000 to try to acquire property for a pocket park. Um, Jeannie Sprague, our Parks and Rec Director, has been meeting with the uh, Parks Committee about um, that very thing and uh, they have recommended going forward with developing that parcel into a pocket park. Uh, there's enough land there uh, to make a nice small park. Um, it's uh, within walking distance of a lot of uh, apartment complexes and families and so uh, instead of using that $80,000 to go find property, uh, we will be using that to uh, develop this park. And, and Jeannie tells me she's also applying to, for a grant that would help uh, 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 add a little bit extra to that money. So we are very excited about creating parks. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> City Manager, um, not wanting to throw cold water on it, but I hate it when it comes back at us later. Now have we researched this of how we got the land and it's okay to have a park there? Yes, I could, did not find any restrictions on that property other than the topography makes it difficult to be more than a pocket park. I understand. Thank you. My question, uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with this property or the ravine. It's right behind Kenny's IGA, uh, just south of the Congregationalist Church. Okay. Um, my question is more to the severity of the, the grade. How do you protect people from 
falling down a ravine. One of the things that uh, Jeannie is checking on with our insurance company is whether or not we need to put a fence along where the, the flat part ends and you have the and then you have the, the drop off that goes down to the ravine. Right now it is all uh, bushes and blackberry bushes and uh, there's a lot of undergrowth in there. And so she's checking to make sure if we, uh, if we need to put up a fence, we would do that. How deep is it? Deep. Uh, How deep is the ravine? I'm not good at that. Um, 70 feet, 60, 70 feet. Oh, that's severe. Yeah. Okay. So no putting a big sign that <laughs> Phil wanted and... No, 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 not for that. It also acts as, it also acts as drainage. another hole, I'm good. <laughs> Mr. Your Honor, Mr. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. Um, in the adjoining tax lot 2317, there's a blue line. Does that mean there's a creek that runs through there? Uh, it's a waterway, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chandler, so congratulations. It's nice. Uh, also, not to throw cold water on things, and I, with children, particularly like the fact that we're trying to develop more pocket parks. However, I have some concerns in that uh, northwest 30th. There is a park there, and so you have um, mm, five blocks away. You're putting another park from another park, and um, on the east-hand side of the road, we only have Regatta Park. And so from my <laughs> recollection, we have a park at Regatta. We have Northwest 30th, and then nothing again until Cutler City. And so I also know that there is an adult, <coughs> an adult store uh, less than a block away from that location and would have concerns over this park being uh, less than, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, 200 feet from an adult sex shop and um, would have concerns over that. Okay. So, so um, uh, I would like, obviously, more parks and appreciate Jeannie Sprague's um, desire to create more. And I know that um, it's very much needed. Uh, so I do have those slight concerns over, over the. We'll location. take those back to the parks board. Thank you. And then Mr. Chandler. That's it for okay. me. Uh, your Honor, Council, um, at your last meeting, you made a motion to settle the uh, Smith litigation. Um, on Friday, I received some documentation from outside counsel, so I ask today that uh, we add to the agenda uh, the Smith litigation, and you did that by unanimous consent at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so this is your time. If I can, Mr. Mayor, I've got a statement I'd like to read. Um, Ross Smith has filed two lawsuits against the city of Lincoln City and our city council in which he alleges we violated the Oregon Public Meetings Law, Oregon Public Records Law, the Lincoln City Charter, and our municipal code at various times. With Mr. Smith's decision to drop the two lawsuits, it will allow us to return to the duties we were elected to do. We, the council, wish to apologize to Mayor Don Williams, Mr. Smith, the city staff, and the citizens of Lincoln City. Although we do not admit we violated any laws. We acknowledge that the lawsuits have served to remind us to be careful, to carefully ensure that our public meetings and executive sessions are held in strict compliance with all ac applicable laws. We regret the impact of disputes between the council, Mr. Smith, and the mayor. The mayor and council pledge to work together to minimize disputes that distract from the important work the mayor, council, and city staff perform for the citizens of Lincoln City. Your Honor, um, Mr. Anderson, go ahead. I offered to apologize if it would help resolve these lawsuits. So accordingly, I apologize to council, including Mayor Williams, and to the citizens of Lincoln City, including Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Apatello. All right, uh, actions, if any, based on works. Oh, I'm sorry, did you have anything else? No, thank you. Actions, if any, based on work session or executive session. Well, I have one on thing. Okay. Um, as to the matter concerning the complaint against the city employee, council has met in an executive session and discussed the allegation and have dealt with and closed this matter. I don't have anything else to read on that. That's good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, we are at announcements or comments by city council. 
comment? Oh, I don't have it on my list, but sure. Oh, I'm sorry. This, guys, I'm so sorry. My mind's not here tonight. Additional comments from citizens present on non-agenda items. Anyone wish to speak? Didn't sign up? Seeing none. Uh, announcements or comments by city council? Why did I have one? Um, oh, um, yeah, um, uh, State of the City tomorrow at the uh, Cultural Center, 1130, 1145? 1145. 1145. At the Cultural Center. At the Cultural Center, thank you. So get your tickets early. That's usually a, a pretty full occasion. Uh, I'll try not to cry and weep too much is, is my want when I talk about things I love. Um, and uh, if that's it, again, we... Uh, we wish to honor the memory of uh, Councilor Ward, and uh, I'm sorry we can't keep a memorial up all the time, but I'm sure appropriate ones will be forthcoming. So with that, may God bless you all. May God bless Lincoln City. We are adjourned. Mike, sir.